The history taught Americans is that North Korean forces attacked South Korea in 1950 and almost overran that new nation until the U.S. military came to the rescue. This is true, but does not explain that the United States government wanted a war. Major American industries had suffered with the loss of military business after the end of World War II, while wealthy Americans sought an excuse to expel the communists from China to recover their businesses. These groups conspired with the administration of President Harry Truman to lure North Korea to attack. American President Franklin D. Roosevelt assumed that China, under Chiang Kai-shek's leadership, would become a great allied power. After World War II ended, a Chinese civil war resumed, and by 1949, the communists had defeated the American-backed forces led by Chiang. See the short video link below for details. Who Lost China became a big political topic in the United States, and President Harry Truman was criticized by those who had demanded direct American military intervention. Corporate America lost billions of dollars invested in China, while the United States lost its key ally in Asia. U.S. military spending plummeted after World War II, and easy profits from government contracts disappeared. The communist threat was used to create and promote a U.S. national security document called the, quote, United States Objectives and Programs for National Security, known as NSC-68. This strategy called for tripling American military spending to contain communism, but had little support in Congress with war debts to repay. The Soviet Union had invaded Japanese-occupied Manchuria at the end of World War II and pushed into northern Korea. The United States agreed to a joint occupation of the Japanese colony of Korea with the 38th parallel designated as a temporary boundary. The Soviets supported popular Korean guerrilla leader Kim Il-sung, who formed a government in the north. He was a prominent leader of the resistance to Japanese occupation for two decades. Major industries owned by the Japanese were nationalized and Japanese collaborators purged from official positions. This led to protests by wealthy Koreans who lost property and jobs. An American occupation force composed of 45,000 men arrived in September 1945 to occupy South Korea. Army Lieutenant General John Hodge was a good combat leader, but had no experience in civil administration. He disliked Koreans since many were deployed to support the Japanese army during the war. Hodges issued an order to his men to, quote, treat the Koreans as enemies, and allowed Koreans who served with the Japanese colonial government, army, and police force to remain on duty. Thousands of Koreans who resisted the Japanese occupation lived in the South and formed people's committees to run cities and towns before the Americans arrived. These were deemed communist by General Hodges and smashed by his police. The Americans flew Sigmund Rhee from Washington, D.C., and anointed him as South Korea's leader, even though he had not lived in Korea for 40 years. He was a wealthy Christian, having earned a Ph.D. from Princeton, and was married to an American. South Koreans saw no change as the Japanese departed and were replaced by American rulers with the same colonial government and police force. A rebellion began as guerrillas took control of most towns and demanded land redistribution, a purge of Japanese collaborators from official positions, and a unified Korea. Unions organized strikes that led to economic turmoil. General Hodges was under pressure to send American troops home and hurried to create a South Korean army to help maintain order. By 1948, it comprised of six divisions led by officers who had served in the Japanese Imperial Army. The Rhee regime, with the support of the U.S. military, began a violent campaign of repression. By 1949, over 100,000 people had been killed and 100,000 political opponents imprisoned. Mass executions were common. Koreans in the North were angry about these events and the American effort to retain South Korea as a colony. Kim Il-sung deployed military forces to the border to show support for rebels in the South. 
American leaders showed no interest in Korea as they focused on countering communist movements in Western Europe. American troops had departed South Korea by 1948, but American military advisors remained, along with the American CIA. As tensions mounted, North Korea massed troops and tanks on the border. The CIA and military intelligence reported this threat to Washington. War may have been deterred if the United States had announced that it would intervene militarily to protect South Korea if necessary, but nothing was said. The United States sent no additional military equipment to South Korea and made no promises to defend it. On January 12, 1950, Secretary of State Dean Acheson told the press that, quote, Korea was now outside the American sphere of influence. The South Korean commander of troops along the 38th parallel in 1949 was Kim Sok-won, He graduated from Japan's Imperial Army Academy in 1915 and rose to the grade of colonel by 1945. He had chased after Kim Il-sung and other Korean guerrillas in Manchuria in the 1930s. Kim Sok-won had been decorated by Japan's emperor, Hirohito, for leading campaigns against Korean guerrillas. As border fights intensified in 1949, the top U.S. commander in Korea, told his superiors that South Korean military forces had started the majority of fighting along the 38th parallel. See the link below for details. The American CIA secretly encouraged these attacks. On June 25, 1950, South Korean troops attacked northward, capturing the city of Heju, a mile north of the 38th parallel. North Korean forces along the border included 70 tanks, something the Americans surely detected with their observation aircraft. Kim Il-sung knew that Ri had little public support and gambled that the South Korean army would collapse if his army invaded. North Korean soldiers crossed the border on June 25th, and by June 28th, they were in Seoul, just 35 miles away. The South Korean army crumbled as most soldiers deserted. North Korean forces marched southward unopposed, and could have secured all of Korea within a week. Korea would be united with little bloodshed as South Korea was freed from decades of colonial rule. This did not occur. President Harry Truman authorized General Douglas MacArthur to rush American combat forces from Japan. He did not seek a formal declaration of war from Congress by stating this was no more than a police action. Yet military spending tripled and conscription resumed. Many government officials were elated by the outbreak of the Korean War. Secretary of State Dean Acheson was a former Wall Street and DuPont Company lawyer, pictured here with Truman. He told colleagues that, quote, the Korean War came along and saved us. According to I.F. Stone's book, Hidden History of the Korean War, first published in 1952, the United States deliberately incited the North to attack that led to a three-year war that left every Korean city destroyed, seven million refugees, two million Koreans dead, and cost the lives of 36,000 American soldiers. 